Hi guys. No, um, yeah, that's the Tiguan. I've driven it for a week. Yeah, so. Yeah, I had a short drive earlier on when they launched the car. And um, I wanted to explore more about the car. And um, it's a good. I mean, Volkswagen arranged this for me because I sent my Audi for 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 service and uh, I mean, for a full service, right? So there, I have a separate video on that. Yeah, I've driven this for a week now. Um, I can say one thing is that I absolutely, absolutely love this car now more than when I first laid eyes upon it. Uh, because at first I thought, um, isn't the design a bit dull to me? But I kind of hear a lot of people saying that, oh, they love the design of the new Tiguan. And and then I, as I spend time with it, it is a car that charms you from within. Not as in within as in the interior, but as in a lot of things that you never thought about, but the engineers have thought about it. And that's what makes it uh, gives it its charm So yeah, the dashboard is, is classic VW dashboard, right? But there is a certain Quality to it not just the fit and finish Well, I mean whenever we're in a Volkswagen, right? There's no need to discuss about Their interior fit and finish. There's it's a moot point M Moot point as in there's there's no argument about it. All right. They fit their interiors perfectly even if at times they use plastic materials like these parts but there's a reason they are there the texture the reflection of the plastic the the, the inherent nature of this material was used as a form of glossing the uh, the interior i like car interiors like that you know that means you don't try to use plastic to mimic metal there's no use in spring silver color however many layers of metallic on it to try to make it look like metal it won't work right but when you use plastic to its advantage it is a very nice it has a very nice reflective pastel color to it that when 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 you are able to use it to its advantage it is a very good material why Plastics are lightweight. They are as light as carbon fiber or maybe lighter, right? Of course, they are not as strong But there are a lot of surfaces in our car that doesn't require them to be strong Say for example our inlays, right? The, the car's interior. Now you can see how I'm driving it now. Now this is the sorry I'm gonna divert subject a bit since I'm doing this this car right when you are doing extreme maneuvers It does so nonchalantly it, it it just goes like, oh, you want to go 90 into a corner where most people do, does it at 60? Fine, you just do it and then without drama, nothing. That's what amazes me about this car. Put it into sports mode, yes, it has 1.4 only. Look at how I go, look at how I go with no car coming from there. Look at how I go, no tire squeals, nothing. And it's so easy to judge the... Uh, left right corners of the car I felt like I'm driving a Golf GTI with with reduced horsepower it, it, it will of course it's 1.4 and it has a big body right it will never be as fast as a Golf GTI I'll be lying if I say so but I like how the car feels lightweight I like how the car accelerates and I just love how it handles the handling part is the the mind-blowing part about this car because uh, so far from 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 the feels of it this car outhandles the CX-5 definitely outhandles the CX-5 uh, in terms of pliancy it's fantastic but not towards the smaller bumps you know the those little uh, expansion joints and all that those you will feel it boom, boom, you will feel a little bit of that but other than that, right, this car is so nice to drive. It is the best handling mid-size SUV that I've tested. 
and the amazing part is that it doesn't it doesn't do it say for example right certain cars when you throw them into a corner you can feel that the car can take it right and then you hear all sorts of tire squeals and all that and sometimes the uh, traction control pump comes up right this car never nothing you you put it into a corner that wow am i am i going too fast but in actual fact i'm sorry i mean i don't usually drive like that but i'm trying to make my point but uh, then i'm caught up with traffic anyway i suspect something has to do with the tires as well because i noticed they are fitted with hankook venters if i'm not wrong I don't, i'm not that familiar with hankook tires but this guy is fitted with quality tires not those um, quality as in performance centric all right slightly towards the performance bias tires not not those you know eco quiet tires where what which car i tested has the crappiest tire fitted uh, the cx9 that i tested earlier on uh, that one that was that was brought in from australia and then the first batch only for us journalists to test it comes with those really really lousy tires and that car was losing traction everywhere and this these boy this these boys right okay they they have a little bit of uh i can feel that they are slightly tough at the side walls so that you you feel the road more and of course you hear the bumps more but overall it just gives this car a fantastic handling fantastic fantastic handling now when it comes to higher speeds let's say for example if you're traveling at 170 180 or 190 right the 2.5 cx5 might might easily catch up with this car all right but when it comes to city speeds speeds like that right with the turbocharger this car can accelerate pretty rapidly all right i like its acceleration not in the fact that not not in the sense that this guy gives an explosive burst of power no but it just keeps on accelerating when you put the, the throttle to the floor yeah when you stuff it and then it just accelerates but again when it when it comes down to at the end of the day right if someone asks me what's the two best qualities of this car first of all is the handling the second thing is if i pop it back to normal mode just now i was in s mode right if i pop it back to normal mode and i just drive like this in the city it almost feels like an ev yes the refinement is so good that when you're just driving like that there is very little road raw you see i'm trying to speak very softly now i am almost whispering which normally i couldn't okay and i'm in the tunnel but most of the time when you're in a tunnel it is actually noisier because you have the ricocheting okay in the tunnel so i'm actually speaking very softly now and if you can hear what i'm saying then you know what i mean because this car right it has excellent premium car kind of road manners road manners as in how the engine and the transmission pairing was done you don't want the car to be choppy you don't want it to be choppy you don't want it to have sudden uh, shifts gear shifts that that jutters the car none of that this car has none of that it's just perfectly smooth okay it is just perfectly smooth very very quiet ride very little road raw very little wind noise i am amazed with this car actually i am amazed much more than the golf 7 i i still remember i was so i was just blown away when i when i drove the golf 7 because the differences between that car and the golf mark 6 is so big and then subsequently every single car that is built on top of the mqb platform just amazes us yeah. so it's a very soothing car to drive so this is great job oh sorry, great job this car yeah solidity is um, i don't need to question that but it's a volkswagen and um recently we don't hear more problems right i mean a few years ago there was the the hope that is gone because as car enthusiasts like us right we wouldn't want to see it pains us to see something like that happening 
and then we're, we're glad that uh, VW Malaysia overcome it you know imagine just imagine you work in there how stressful you are for the past few years you know it's not something that you can control either so uh, yeah kudos to them so yeah man this car can buy definitely a seal of approval <laughs> Yep. Hi guys, morning. Aha. Uh -huh. Yep, yep, yep. The Tiguan. I think this is. It's been quite a while since I took a test drive car for about a week, and uh, I thoroughly love it, man. I thoroughly love it. Um, this is the Tiguan. I actually wanted to test drive the Comfort Line and the Trend Line because I felt that two cars. Yeah, that they don't have the LCD screen gizmos and all that, right? But having driven MQB platform cars, I kind of felt that these cars, right? Their greatest strength, their greatest, uh, that the the best things about these cars, right, is actually their ride quality, their handling, you know, the way they feel behind the wheel. That's why, on that on that note, right. All the other toys are actually irrelevant, so to speak, because yes, they're good. I mean, the toys are awesome, but when the car drives so well, it makes you smile behind the wheels. Um, you can enjoy the car. 80-90% of the car's best bits without those toys. So that's, that's my suspicion. And after driving for one week, right, uh, it confirms my suspicion. This car is... Uh, how do I put this? Uh? Most of the time when it makes me smile, right, has nothing to do with the specs. Yes, the specs are awesome. The, the infotainment system is great. The LCD screens are awesome. But it's the way it drives. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look at the design first. All right. Let me turn you around. Uh, now, this is the kind of design that... Uh, it's not easy to come up with this kind of design. Why, 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 why do I say so, right? First of all, on, on the first look, right, you kind of felt that, oh, why does it look so blunted and so dull, right? But as you look at it more, right, you will realize that they didn't apply the standard design theme of outright appealing, the kind of, you know, uh, sharp headlamps, you know, a sporty profile. Uh, they do something that is more reserved and you have to spend time to discover the nice bits about it, all right. The unique bits about it. This part here, where the body folds in like that, and then light goes up like that, and then light juts out here. See this part? It's a very. It's like they, they split open. It's a very unique treatment on car designing, and then this thing just goes like that. It's it's unique when you draw it on paper, right? To have the line fold in, right? It's like, would that work? But in real life, it works. So. Yeah, and that that forms the main character line, and then this indentation here, but it sort of disappears over at the wheel arches. Instead of joining this line, it sort of just disappears. Hmm, interesting. <coughs> uh, this feels very premium. This whole thing is metal, so very solid. Yeah, and of course the headlamps they are. They have a lot of lines going through. It's like, whoa, wow, 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 wow. But the end result, they look good. So now now VW has like a... They're trying to blend in the whole headlamp with the, the front grills and all that. So it just looks like a horizontal slab. And it makes the car look looks wide. Okay. Yep. So is it a good looker? Yes, it is a good looker. Okay, that's the exterior, the rims. Yeah, these are the Hankooks. And they're great tires, man. They are great tires. It's, it's good to see Tomica give you really good tires on stock. And of course, why? Because they're called Evo. See that? Hankook Evo tires. Name after us. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, let's go in. A lot of mosquitoes. I don't want to get dengue. If I, if I keep filming here, I'll get dengue. Look at that, look at that, when you go up the car. Whoa! Let's see that again. 
I'll start the car now. Of course, it's great to have this, uh, but even if you opt for the one without the LCD screen, right? I think those are great as well. Yeah, because again, this car drives so well. Um, this one, you can play through the menus. Uh, it's very user-friendly. Really user-friendly. You can just go up and down. You control it from here. See? Up and down. And then, uh, OK. You press OK. To, if I go into navigation, just press OK. And then it goes here. These are the views, right? Efficiency. You change the central dial. See that? Consumption, speed and gear. And then classic but I find myself rarely playing with it lah, seriously because ah I like this one it toggles back and forth you know the, the Audi dynamic select selection right uh, comfort sport eco blah blah right when you reach bottom right you have to go back up and press up, up, up go back oh that's so tiring anyway let's go back yeah I can go like that oh, because I was here just now or you can select others when you, you go left or right here to make other selections so you can go audio to audio so they're playing the radios the channels right yes I'm a Maxis user <laughs> for so many years but I don't seem to get a lot of benefits anyway yeah okay so we're done with this we're done with this oh yeah not yet not yet not yet so under navigation, you see here and there, right? If you oh, uh, okay, it does it by itself already. So yeah, yes. Uh, how it is? Okay, now we come to here. This one is is very user friendly. All these are shortcut buttons. You press, you know, media, phone, voice. Uh, okay, okay, never mind. Traffic, car, menu, everything is here and it's touch screen. So it's super straightforward. It is super duper straightforward, and you can activate Apple CarPlay. Apple, if you have Apple, you can have Apple CarPlay. But even though it sounds like a unique selling point to have Apple CarPlay, right? I kind of felt that Apple totally, totally neutered the capabilities of this thing because they have all these in-house apps and all that that they don't, you know, allow any form of meaningful expansion all right the hitchbacks are here these are climate control units so it's dual zone climate control yeah it's only dual zone climate control even if i sell them on this right the recirculation i kind of felt that the filters of this air conditioning unit is damn good because in other cars right if i don't own this i i will smell a lot of uh <laughs> how do i put this yeah, I will smell a lot of what outside should smell like, but I don't. So uh, the filters are great, right? The dashboard, nothing flashy in its design, but they use uh, like all these plastic materials to its advantage. Plastic by default has its own pastel kind of polish, reflective look. And if you use it to your advantage, right, it's, it's actually a decent, a very nice material to work with instead of... Um, how do I put this? Actually, right, I kind of felt that <laughs> cars with interior trims like these and they put carbon fiber, it's just yeah, because I bet this plastic piece is lighter than the carbon fiber one, right? Okay, so these are really nice as well. Pattern uh, inlays and they are repeated over here and it sort of look like a speaker grill, so they seem like a unified unit. But there's a lot of hexagonal shape here, hexagonal, hexagonal. You know, everywhere, overall, the whole car's theme is, uh, yeah. It's like they are given a ruler and a pencil to draw the car. But a little bit, it, it gives it that kind of manly feel to it, okay? There's a flat bottom steering. I really appreciate flat bottom steering now because um, it, it allows me, it allows better ingress and egress, actually. Go in and out, you know, without this bottom part jutting out. So yeah, kind of like them, and of course pedal shifters. I am a big proponent of pedal shifters. To me, pedal shifters is a safety device. Okay. So uh, what else? oh, look at that! It shows me the wheel angle. Whoa! Nice, huh? See that? Wow. 
Wow. Look at the steering wheel. So easy to correct back to zero angle. Good, huh? Okay, I really love the compartments. There's a, there are a lot of compartments in this car. Okay, first off, the nice one, covered in felt, very user friendly to have it here. I actually didn't discover this the first day. I thought it's some speaker unit. <laughs> okay, and then here. All right. Every compartment is very high quality. This one I love the most with uh, rubberized. All right, so you even have your USB ports, your auxiliary, and your 12 volt cigarette lighter there. Start button is here, and then you have a very big door bins, very big door bins, and they are cup, they are carpeted. How many, how many premium cars are carpeted? All right, and look at that, a deep glove box, and uh, there's a CD player. Yeah, man. This one. A very deep center console storage. I like the fact that this this thing works like the Audi one, so they don't click lock, so your cables can run free or whatever. But there isn't any USB ports inside. So uh, yeah, this one. This is the world's best cup holder. I'm not joking. This is the number one cup holder in the world. In the world of cup holders, this is the cup holder of cup holders. All right, why? Because it's just genius, okay? This is a very big compartment, but when you have this, David Blaine, okay? And it's variable, you can hold your Venti Grande, your Red Bull, Kachit, the Red Bull Austria, Red Bull, Thailand, and then you can keep it back. Then you can put your stuffs. Fantastic. This alone is worth 160000 and then it comes with a car. I love it. Volkswagen should apply this to all their cars. This is genius. This is the cleverest cup holder I've ever seen. And imagine they didn't, if they didn't go with this design, right? This is just squared off. And then here it's squared off as well. And then they put four of these. Wow! Giant compartment. And then you can have four cup holders. Alright. So, uh, yeah. Let's have a look at the seats. Ah, uh, this reminds me of Audi A4 again. Audi, look at VW's seats. They're hugging, yes, just like yours. They're comfortable as well, just like yours. Leather wrap, just like yours, but they have pipings, not like yours. And they have stitches with meaningful designs that gels with the car. Not like your Audi A4 with two, I don't know why, two sort of stitching that comes up here for no reason at all. Yeah, and this actually gels with that. See that? There is a common theme to it. There is a common theme. And they look good. Okay. And then, of course, I love this handle. I love it. So this car is, I don't know, maybe they watch my review when they design this. <laughs> okay. Uh, sunglass holders. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was given on an Audi event. Yeah. High quality. Very solid. Yeah. So it's a high quality product. Let's go to the back. <laughs> Uh, the boot release is here. Mm. Oh, spacious. Very spacious. Very, very spacious. I think the dashboard looks good, huh? Okay, let's turn you around. Around and round and round and round. It's very spacious. And then this headrest is comfy. I can rest. Sorry, la, Audi. I have to pick on you again. It's the new A4. The new A4, the headrest, right? Pushes your head like that. Yeah, seriously. It's here. And then your head has to be like... And then you can't rest because the thing won't be adjusted. There's only one level. Pop up and that's it. So your head is like this. And either you fall off sideways or the other way. But your head is just like that. You can't even rest your neck. 
I don't understand why they do that. This one is so good. This is how headrests is supposed to be. They're supposed to be comfortable. Not just for safety reasons, right? For whiplash and all that. So, yes. It's more comfortable than the Audi A4 back here. I know different segment, yeah. It's more comfortable than the Audi A4 back here. I can rest my neck like that. This is the resting position, not this. This is freaking boardroom meeting. And everyone has a higher rank than you. But this is... Yeah, this is boardroom meeting when everyone is lower rank than you. <laughs> okay? So it's comfortable. And uh, I like these. I don't know why they stop halfway. Here? Okay. Of course, this is largely dependent on the seat angle of the front passenger. Okay, uh, I'll give you an example. This is uh, when mommy is resting, uh, children won't be able to have a good meal. But they're very thoughtful. See this latch here? Okay, this actually helps to stop the thing from sliding down. Very thoughtful. And then you have a cup holder for the kids, they will love it. See? That's very nice. Very nice for this tray to be here. This tray is worth 160000 and then it comes with a car. Oh, I'm sorry. I am sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, I, for I forgot to do the headroom. Banyak. Okay, leg room. Banyak. I can slot not just my feet, but my ankle and my calf. Underneath the front seats is very comfortable. And then, another important aspect when it comes to rear seating, let me show you. See where my feet is slotted? Between the rail and the base of the bench. So, oops. Sorry. It's like you cannot slap like that. <laughs> Why this is important, you know? Why is this important? Because as a middle passenger, right, if I'm able to slot my feet underneath, like this, that means I is comfortable. <laughs> yeah, it means I'll be comfortable and hit room. Of course, this is not a three-seater like those Jap uh, European MPVs. European MPVs are five-seaters. Yeah, European MPVs are five-seaters. And uh, they have three individual seats here, and each of them slides around. Cars like the uh, Renault Scenic, cars like the Mercedes B Class, okay, like the uh, BMW Active Tourer, Golf Plus. It's a big segment in Europe, okay. They are taller, larger hatchbacks. So they have three seats, and most of them have three sets of Isofix instead of two. So all SUVs, all five-seater passenger cars, right? All the sedans, right? Actually, technically speaking, they should be called four plus one because this middle is the plus one, all right? Um, I apologize just now because this car is tri-zone climate control. See that? Okay. So for the rear passengers, you have three zones, but this thing is tiny, uh, huh? so that's all it can blow, but it's, at least it's angled upwards, at least it's angled upwards, blowing straight in the nether regions between my legs, okay? So, yeah, man, and you have a 12-volt plug here, yep, that's the rear quarters of the car. You have your own vanity lighting here, okay? Yeah, it's padded. Yeah, very comfortable cabin. Very spacious. Yeah, let's go to the boot. This one comes with a power boot. Oh, my son's scooter. 
Okay. It doesn't have a tonneau cover because of the slanted rear. This part is quite narrow, so you don't need a tonneau cover. Tonneau covers are very heavy, a lot heavier than these, and they do the same job. Okay. There's the spare underneath, a space saver, but and then some, some storage space around. The boot isn't the largest in class, but because of the very, very square shape, I find it very usable. I put in a full-size off-road capable pram with a walker with luggage for five person for a four day trip all this in here and i still have a little bit of rear visibility available all right so it's spacious spacious enough 280 psi denotes the horsepower or the performance output uh, category that this car falls under in the Volkswagen Group denomination. Okay, so yeah, that's the inside. A 1.4 litre TSI engine. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna show you the engine because I'm one handed. <laughs> All right. That's how this car is. I think it's a lovely, lovely car. All right, see ya. It has finally come. I have to return this car. <sighs> Oh well, shad, shad, oops, okay, what am I doing here, dun, dun, dun. see that, Isn't technology amazing? <laughs> subscribe. Why you don't subscribe? Please? Please subscribe. <laughs> Bye.